Hi, welcome to the Linux channel. See, after a successful uh, video series on uh, PROC uh, file system, uh, I got uh, various, uh, uh, you know, mails or, uh, you know, responses from the viewers uh, to shoot a video on uh, CCFS file system. In fact, uh, in the PROC uh, uh, file system video series, I have been uh, mentioned that I am not uh, a big fan of uh, CCFS or any other uh, kernel interfaces. Okay, so let it be IOCTL or any other you know kernel interfaces. I generally uh, love PROC interface and if I need to do some sort of uh, you know custom uh, uh, kernel debugging and stuff like that uh, then I most of the times tend to use uh, a proc file system of course you can do with uh, uh, you know print uh, messages but the thing is print uh, print case are not interactive you cannot turn off and turn on any variables and stuff like that hence you know in this case uh, proc is quite handy and in case if you are uh, you know uh, beginning your uh, journey in uh, kernel uh, programming or uh, uh, you know device driver programming in linux kernel and stuff like that one of the things uh, uh, you assume is uh, we need to mandatory uh, you know or uh, you think is uh, uh, these are various uh, kernel interfaces and i need to learn all of them uh, to make possible write my custom modules and custom device drivers in the kernel actually but uh, this is a myth if you are writing any custom uh, drivers uh, perhaps the drivers uh, which you write need standard interfaces since they need standard interfaces you need to uh, incorporate all this stuff say for instance you are writing a networking uh, you know port driver okay uh, like a virtual uh, port like you get uh, loopback interface or any sort of turn tap interface or dummy interface and stuff like that so if you want something like that say for example do it config see as you see here you get all these interfaces uh, these are two physical interfaces two nic cards <laughs> versus see this one is motherboard integrated nic card and this is an uh, add-on uh, pci nic card which i just slotted in so you can see there there are two NIC cards are two interfaces which are real versus this interface is not real but the driver which uh, you know uh, responsible for this loopback interface is going to just work as the same almost the same as any physical interface hence the interfaces related to this port will also be the same like any other ports hence if you write any custom uh, you know drivers uh, mimicking a usb port mimicking something mimicking in this case uh, a network interface card you have to still use those uh, standard interfaces uh, some could be through proc for example nic card uh, you know statistics and stuff like that okay you get uh, you know these things actually rx packets and bytes and uh, a number of drops and collisions and stuff like that so these things you get it in you know proc interface uh, as you can open cd proc sys net so somewhere you should able to find those uh, interfaces so for, uh, uh, it's, it's not proc actually it is both proc but you will get it in sys class you know as well actually i can even show that uh, sys class net and then you get this interfaces and you can go here and then you can say uh, cd statistics and then you get this interface see cat rx bytes uh, bytes and you get those statistics uh, which is the same as you get from the if config or ip commands as well so same thing even you get it in proc also so proc uh, uh, proc i forgot where it is proc net and uh, cd stat and uh, i don't think so this one uh, somewhere it will show com consolidated network stats. So let's just quickly Google uh, proc, you know, uh, network port stats, something like that, and we will find the file name. As you see here, proc net dev. Okay, so we go there, uh, proc net cat dev, and you can see there the same statistics are shown here so in my automation uh, if i uh, architect something usually i tend to use sysfs i avoid using this because if you do this again you need to do this uh, grep and loopback 
and again you need to filter those things so you don't need to do that if you access via sysfs file system hence i'm saying if you write any uh, drivers so sometimes you need to uh, implement multiple kernel uh, inter interfaces so just the way as the driver demands but there is an exception if you add any extra kernel code and uh, most of the times it is not a kernel module okay i'll come to that because if it is a kernel module you can anyway disable you can any anyway enable some variable value and then you can recompile stuff like that okay i mean to say you can do rm mode do some changes you can do an ins mode and quickly do that iterations and you can debug but this is not possible if you have some code and you add some parts of kernel which demands the whole kernel compilation it is very tricky to do something like that so in those cases generally i do lot of such code which does not involve kernel module uh, development like you know <laughs> so in that cases uh, i tend to use most of the times to debug via prod file system and as well if you want if you are a fan of sysfs you can also use sysfs in that instances but if you are writing standard drivers so then you need to provide the interfaces and register just the way as the driver demands hence i'm giving an example where it completely comes see almost all my videos you notice almost all my videos are quite lengthy and it is lengthy for a reason so that viewers get get an experience like as if you are having almost like a paid session with me so some some glimpse of it okay of course if it is uh, my students i will have even more <laughs> lengthy discussions so generally they voluntarily send a request and uh, for a session and then i send them some time slot whenever i am free since these days i work full time i don't get much time but still i manage to do so okay so hence i'm saying you know these are some of the examples as you see network interfaces also needs io ctl access and uh, stuff like that okay so hence various interfaces in that one among them is sysfs along with proc io ctl and uh, stuff like that which you can provide access to your kernel code not necessary kernel modules okay so don't get confused modules are pluggable modules i meant to say kernel code which is almost like part of a large module or large code base okay so something like that so for instance if you go here and if you go to this net folder and if you go to this uh, core and dev.c and uh, assume you are just adding some bunch of lines in some api okay for instance somewhere over here so in that case how can you call this as kernel module you know hence it's a part of kernel you are adding some code to do some operation as per the way you need hence i'm not using the name always kernel modules it depends it can be a module or it can be a small code you add inside the kernel hence you know so we come back see uh, uh, before starting you can uh, get a various uh, sample uh, code for sysfs as you see here i can uh, link this uh, 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 website as well you can get some uh, you know random um, examples here and there and uh, there is uh, also you know uh, official documentation you will find about this uh, sysfs about uh, you know k objects and stuff like that so without further ado uh, we start uh, you know uh, my code base so this is the sample code which i wrote i was just doing some changes here and there before this episode as well so as you see here uh, this is the uh, sample code uh, before that i can even show this uh, proc uh, file system uh, proc file system and uh, this video series i did long back and recently i have done some two add on uh, videos uh, to port it to the recent kernel so that it is still uh, works fine unlike the older versions okay so you can see there this is the read one episode is about read one episode is about write file access and one episode is about you know creating a directory in a proc file system and stuff like that and recently i have added two videos this is done sometime uh, uh, around a, one year before uh, and this is sometime uh, did almost 10 days ago okay so this is what it is so that you know this old code is no longer going to compile in recent kernels hence you need to watch this episode to make it compliant okay 
so we can do one thing we can uh, as well open this uh, proc example code and we can uh, somewhat compare both so that you get even more a bigger picture so although you come here for sysfs your journey is not going to stop at sysfs you need to as a kernel uh, developer or an expert you need to know various techniques because me being you know somewhat an architect or a solutions you know provider or uh, solutions architect i generally pick the best which i like and which i feel it suits for my applications hence i am always opinionated but if you are an youngster you can't be opinionated you need to explore all the things and uh, it again depends on your architect uh, and uh, your uh, managers or seniors uh, who request you to do things in a certain way hence i am saying but me as you know uh, holding a specific title or whatever i am always opinionated because i generally architect things i generally prefer doing in this specific way for you know whatever rewards it can give me has okay so hence it is what it is uh, so let's pick this uh, recent one so let's download this uh, code and um, uh, we can just you know compare both of them so that it can give you a better you know picture in this context so let's take this proc example and uh, let's quickly go inside there publish code seven minutes. yeah so let me extract here and you can see this is the code and we compare both of them so this as you see here i have added this timestamp so one is uh, long back i have changed and again recently i have changed and uh, this is the code only to do the read access of that file so since proc is quite easy and uh, you know quick to implement and uh, you know it just works you know in, a, in the most simplest way hence i always tend to prefer proc okay so going back to the sysfs now the real thing starts so you can see here i'm just doing a module in it module exit like any module since this episode i want to give a separate uh, module as an example i'm doing this way but you can do the same code above within the kernel as well without module in it module exit as well okay with the way i was telling earlier so if you want you can trigger in some part of the kernel and then you can do that without even doing this module exit and uh, module in it so i don't want to mention in this video because that is very lengthy and very tricky how i generally approach okay so hence i'm saying we take this as a simple example as a separate independent kernel module attempting to create a sysfs file which you can get read write access okay so as you see here in the module in it we have this uh, main data structure called k object so sysfs uses this uh, general uh, you know kernel data structure called k object and this is not something is needed for you know proc file system proc file system is completely different it has its own dedicated uh, you know data structure again this uh, proc uh, file operations and stuff like that but sysfs uses this kernel object uh, i don't want to much go uh, deeper about this k object even i am not an expert in that so i don't want to give much uh, inputs from my end but i have you know got some interesting links uh, which i can uh, provide okay over here see this is the official uh, document uh, you will find about you know k object you can see there it is part of the kernel source and uh, somewhere if you search again uh, you know k object you will find the data structure and stuff like that and of course you will also find sometimes official kernel documentation within the kernel although i am unable to navigate you will find it in the you know documentation folder somewhere you should able to find either here it is not here in that case some folder within this actually i am not sure which folder contains that but anyway as i navigate i can able to find it in this uh, random source which should also help you because they talk extensively about k object data structure and its implications and applications and stuff like that so you can see their data structure and its uh, uh, respective uh, you know apis for the data structure and then uh, there's a lot of description about each api again after that there is also you know info about its usage and stuff like that and one among the examples they have provided is this uh, sysfs as well and uh, so and so so and so so let's go back to the code base 
as you see here i am using this uh, data structure and uh, i am instantiating a variable called a register k object and uh, that uh, you know k object we can actually create a folder over here in the module in it as a k object create and add and this is the folder name so this folder it will be creating under uh, sys kernel and mice is something like that so this is the folder and uh, uh, this is the you know kernel object uh, which is this uh, which is the register k object and uh, this Yeah. So this is the